good. Everything is live. So yeah, um, and I usually, so my normal, I, I teach, you know, depending on the student, different things. But hey, chess wizard, you're number one. The um, thing that I usually do is work with you to, besides looking at your games, we go over it, we find one or two things to work on at a time. I find that it's bad if you're trying to do too many things at once. So we don't want to give you like 20 things for you to go work on. We want to give you one or two things so you can focus on that, hopefully improve in that area, and then you could come back and work on other things, you know, another time. Okay. All right, so I'll be looking for those one or two things to help you with. And then we normally have you play against a viewer so that you can, you know, see how well you're doing in those, you know, to check it out and test it out. Oh, that's uh, kind of, let's hide that one. All right, so that's usually the modus operandi is we go over some games, we learn together, you go play a viewer, and then we come back and review, did you do those things that we were working on? Did, did that work out well? Okay. All right, cool. And that's probably what we'll do because this is your first lesson. Sometimes by a second or third lesson, um, we're doing other things. More specific, understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this will be specific for you, for sure. Um, I tell all of them to each student, so I mean, it doesn't make, I, I don't want to just give you general lessons like on end games and general lessons on openings or general lesson on middle game and, and not tailor it to you. I always want to tailor it directly to your needs. All right, time to get started. So, I did have, uh, I did take some of your games now, I don't know if any of these games are ones that you're proud of. I actually took, you had some wins in a row that I was looking at when um, when I was pulling them. So, I mean, we can look at those. I, I believe in general, you always learn a little bit more from a loss than a win because the win might be because the other player like made lousy moves. <laughs> so it's, yep. it's harder to find things that you might want to work on. But today, guys, we are doing a one-on-one -on -one lesson with Patrick Kloss, 513. And uh, we're going to see what he can, what we can do to help him improve, of course. And I always like to start off, and I will start off again. So, Patrick Loss, what would you, first of all, do you want me to call you Patrick Loss or Pat? or? You, you can say Patrick. Patrick's fine. All right, we'll go with Patrick. And, uh, Pat or Patrick. Why don't you tell me maybe what you, why you play chess, how long you've been playing chess, uh, how you got started playing chess online. Do you play over the board? Just tell us your chess history. Uh, so history, I learned to play from my stepdad probably around like 13 or so, but we, we just kind of learned how to, I, I learned how to move pieces around, never got competitively about it. I'm a super, played sports all through high school, super competitive person, um, own a business, and my business partner played me at his parents' house once and just destroyed me, and I was like, I cannot let Mark beat me that bad at chess, so that, that fueled my motivation probably at like 30 i'm 36 i was about 32 to then start actually studying chess so i've really been playing a lot in the past three to four years outstanding before that there was no there was no big background of chess at all so how do you then i fell in love with it so when you say study what does that mean to you how do you study um i fell into a bad habit early on where i liked the quick time controls for the action i would say Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of opening study to start off like the first year of chess, which was probably bad or two. Um, now I've tried to give myself more structure and I'll do uh, more tactics and or recently I got a few books. I got like the Polgar book with 5,334 puzzles and I go through like 20 of those in a day. Um, and then I got uh, Simple Chess and I've been reading that and kind of started started trying to analyze games more often. Yep, that book right there. And then you've been analyzing games, like which game, what kind of games? So, so I got a simple chess. Mm -hmm. If you've seen that book or not, so no, I've been that going, one I playing seen. through the chapters, playing through the chapters in that. Okay. And um, the other, the other book I got to analyze games was the sixty-two most instructive games, which is written in old chess notation. So that's been the learning curve there was like a game or two, but now I got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I grew up with the old notation so it actually was a learning curve for me when they came out with books that were in algebraic and i was like what <laughs> and, trying to, and, and it took forever and i actually i have score sheets from when i played in tournaments 
they were all old English notation and it took me forever to change keeping score that way. So do you play any over the board? Well, you played over the board with your co um, with your step, step colleague. Do yeah. um, you ever played any so tournaments? There's a, there, no tournaments since then. He's got a chess club. They meet on Thursdays. I have not been able to make it there most of the time. I got two two little kids too. So I got a, a 12-year-old and a, a 7-year-old. Oh, congrats. Good both play sports so time time wise is but have i have not had time to go my wife's an er nurse so she's always on crazy hours 12 hour shifts she works a lot of thursdays so i haven't had time to meet with them a goal of mine though is to start being able to play some go there a little more often and play some some local tournaments all right at some and, point, hopefully. and have you uh, started teaching the young ones how to play chess yet i have so my daughter's known how to play she doesn't really like to play as much my son's shown more interest uh as of late and wanting to play. Okay. So I started him probably a little younger. He's I've been teaching him since he was or showing him or playing around with a board at, you know, four or five. Okay. So so I got to ask the question, have you and or they seen uh, Searching for Bobby Fisher? Uh, I have seen Searching for Bobby Fisher. They have not seen Searching for Bobby Fisher yet. That's yeah, a great movie for me for, and for showing movie. the kids, right? Showing the people that are starting out because it just gets them fired. You know, you don't want, you probably don't want them to see uh, the Queen's Gambit uh, series. But, you know, Searching for Bobby Fisher it is clean and good and <laughs> it's, it's safe to show the kids. It, it's funny you mentioned that because I was thinking that like for a movie night like a, a week or two ago, like maybe I'll maybe I'll put on Searching for Bobby Fisher for <laughs> times here soon and see if it sparks their interest a little more it's a good movie though i mean even if you know nothing about chess you can enjoy that movie yep. now queen of cotaway i also saw saw that one and that's a good one too but it's not as good as searching for bobby fisher but queen of cotaway is also based on a true story with real people that and and it's a female lead the queen of cotaway i've not seen that or heard of that one yet yeah check that one out Check that I'll one out. I'll have to check that out, yeah. I'll have to write yeah. it down. Yeah, as part of the lesson, you know, we give you materials to check out and, and look into. I, pre I, I appreciate that. You're, you're, you're a kind man. <laughs> well, that's, that's the job. That's the job. All right. Um, I, something else was in my mind I was going to share with you based on the story you were telling me, but I can't. Oh, scorekeeping. Do you know how to keep score on paper? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Because you do but, it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the computer does it for you, right? Does it for you, yeah. And But if you read a magazine, you'd get to see them. If you look in a book, not the old English, but the new uh, algebraic books, not the ones with the images, because you're not going to sit there and draw a picture of a knight, right? You're going to just use an N. Uh, but, N, yeah. Yeah. And F3. So, yeah. I, I would suggest when you go to that club and play a series game, you pull out a piece of paper and you write down the moves. First of all, you get to keep it. In fact, I would practice doing it with my uh, son and or daughter when you play them. Write down the moves. Because you can then go over the game a day later, two days later, right? A month later. Um, one of my greatest joys is going over games I played with my dad who taught me how to play chess when I was eight. And he's since passed. And I can still go pick up a game that we played and, and go through the moves because it's on paper. And it's like he's, he's there with me. So it's a keepsake that you could do if you play your son a game, keep score of the game, and then say, okay, I'm going to just put this away in 30 years from now when I'm 66 or whatever you will be, uh, and he's got a family, and he's got kids, and he's teaching them how to play chess. I could say, hey, 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 remember this? This was a game you played when you were only like 12 years old. Or... So yeah, just a suggestion awesome. on the side. All right. Oh, oh, let's see. What's going on here? Hey, busy. How are you? Hey, Colorado. Thank you for the follow. I love my uh, superhero alerts that tell me when people do things. Thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. All right. So we are doing a one-on-one -on -one lesson with Pat, uh, Patrick today. And so you guys can follow along and give us ideas. But later, we're going to need an opponent for him. We're doing the basic model for the first lesson. First lesson. And so we'll need someone to play him later. Hey, Busy, let me give you a shout out because, uh, you know, I did give Chess Wizard the power. <laughs> oh, he already did it. He already did it. He beat me to it. All right. I'm sorry. I missed that. Oh, which one's an awesome movie, uh, Chess Wizard? Because I like them both. 
But I, I think searching for Bobby Fischer is, is the best. All right, guys. Let me know, uh, Chess Wizard, when you decide on what that best movie is, that awesome movie you're talking about. All right, so let's go over a game. And uh, again, if you have, do you have any recent games that you want me to go over? Or should I just pick, I, I have nine of these in the, in a study right now. Use the nine you got, you're, you're fine. All right, I'm going to invite you to the study. Perfect. So you can actually write and draw arrows and give me your input also. And all you have to do is, uh, you're going. do you know how to find it? Yep, I'm in here already. Ah, uh, you're good. See, I, I don't want to assume and, and tell you how to do something because you might already know how to do it. So here's a win for you. And uh, Pat, Patrick is uh, white. So far, so good. Um, and then we get uh, the knight move, right? Okay, we're attacking, yeah. which, no worries. You step up the queen. Up this move order right here. So you can uh, castle, I do. or you can develop your bishop. But you know the queen coming out early isn't bad, right? Because you're it's, you get one more piece to develop, and then you could castle either side. Always like the option, and then we get your opponent moves the piece twice. Now, you have he has three pieces developed. You have four pieces developed. You are ahead in development. You are, um, in my estimate, is winning the game. Why? You're ahead in development. You have the only center pawn. You He has not even moved a center pawn yet. So you are definitely winning this game at this moment. So what's going on with this? Sense. What's Why do you think he made this move? And what is... Tell, walk me so through the threats what to take thought. the threats to take the bishop so that you can't play this. That's that's what I take the threat as. Which, so you, so you, you know, can't play before, what? I'm pretty sure I've... Uh, so you can't play... Try to attack the weak in these dark squares over here and get rid of the fian shadowed bishop. Okay, you can actually draw arrows and, and circles, right clicking, and I'll see it. Yep. Oh, I, I did, sorry. You see him right here? Nope. Are you, uh, check your bottom left right below your name and the number one. See if the sink it has an X or a check mark. I got PGN tags down here. Yeah, it's above that. So if you yeah if you look right below the white rook, you should see your uh, well you won't see your name because it depends on how your board is set up. Uh, there's no sync there at all. There should be a sync for the option. Uh, yep, it should be a sync with a check mark to the right of that. Should be record with a check mark R E C, and then it should have a tags P G N tags tag. Uh, all I have is the P G N tag. I do not see the. Word Check sync mark. over there? Huh. Nope. Well, I'm going to refresh my I screen. See, I could see you moving. But, uh, okay. And yep, now we're good. Now we're good here. Is that better? Yep, now I can see it. All right. That helps okay. a whole lot for us right. to, for this discussion. Here, yes. I, just, I, re I refresh, sorry. Um, so this was actually from the prep I know of this line a little bit. Is I messed up the move order here. So before you play this queen out, you're supposed to play F3. Okay, so let's stop go back. this knight from coming here. Okay, so supposed to play F F three here. Yep. All right. So general principles. What's wrong with F three? Uh, you're weakening the king, and you're not developing a piece. You're wasting a pawn move. Right. So you're weakening. I'll say you're weakening the king's side, not the side. king. Side. Yeah. 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 You're exposing the king a little bit, but mostly you're weakening the king's side. So if you were to castle over here, this would be a slight weakness, right? Because the pawn is moved. Yep. Okay. All right, but yeah, so that's, and that's the nice thing about knowing an opening. But if I didn't know this opening and know that I was supposed to play um, F3, I'd be, I'm, I'm fine with this move, right? It's a developing move. You're threatening to try to get rid of the bishop maybe in a little bit. Yes, you could castle queen side. So I, I have no problem with this move at all. And then he does this and you might say, well, you know, after the game, you might say, well, that was annoying. I think next time I'll play this or this to keep the knight from getting in here, right? That's logical, and that's okay. So, you didn't play it in that order, but so what does this move do for him? You said it keeps this bishop from getting here because he's threatening... He's trying to... Yeah, he's trying to remove... So, uh, the way I look at it is like you're trying to remove the counterpart of this bishop. Okay. What else is it doing? Right, there's so something that this, else... bishop's, this bishop's stronger. There's um... something else it's doing that's a little bit more fundamental. 
little bit more fundamental. Mm -hmm. It's opening up this bishop and putting two attackers here. Very good. As well. Very good. So it's one, it's it's open up the bishop and you have two attackers and you have two defenders. And at the same time that it's opening it up and giving you two attackers, this knight is also threatening to remove a defender. Now you can replace that with a pawn that would also defend the knight. But if you took back with the queen, he would have effectively removed the defender and he'd have two against none. All right. So every time, every time you're attacked, and this is true every time you attack someone, there are up to five possible things that you can do in reply. And you might have heard me do this with Linear Stalk if you were in on his lesson. Do you remember it? Uh, I watched a little bit of that one. Oh, okay. You can, uh... It hurt my you feelings. You're supposed to have watched the great. whole thing and, and watched it two like, or three times I think I by watched now. like an hour, an hour of the hour and a half of it on the recording. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like, you know, I should, I, I should expect that you had watched it and studied that video. No. So there's five possible things you could do anytime you are attacked. Do you want to see if you can um, name them? I think, yeah, I think I knew them in less than five, but it kind of included them. So you can... Uh, so defend, right? And then there's like active defense versus passive defense. I don't know about active and passive. You'll have to tell me, but so, teach me what you mean. Uh, if you were defending here, but it opened up, like if there was a bishop where the king was and you were defending here and you move this pawn to attack this piece and then it also did a discovery attack, you're like actively defending because you're attacking at the same time. Okay. Um, then you have passive defense, which would be just covering the attacked piece. Okay. Right? You can You can exit in the style. Right? Yep. Wasn't that one of your Yeah, your, it was actually things. Sudaku. Then, Sudaku says is retreat, Sudaku came up, yeah. retreat retreating in, in style. style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can look for a stronger or equal to threat, right? Okay. Um, an equal or stronger threat, EST, however you want to say it. Um, you said that was the least of the ways to do it. I said it was the um, most risky. The, the most dangerous. The most yes. dangerous, I and, guess. And more times than not, it's not the right choice. It's a bad choice. But when it is the right choice, it's usually an awesome choice. Yep. So, or, or I would imagine it's uh, removing, you know, attacking the attacker. Uh-huh. You could take it. So one is you could take it, which you can't. Another one, uh, which I think you said was part of defense, is interpose. Right, where you put something between the piece and the piece it's attacking, but you can't do that with a knight, right? It's impossible because knights jump yeah. over everything. Jump. But that would be another one. So one would be to take it, which is normally the best if you have that option. It, not it's the best, it's just percentage-wise it's the best normally. And so one is taken, one is interposed, one is run away, one is defend the piece, right? And it already is defended, but to defend the piece. And uh, the last one would be to attack something of equal or greater value. All right, so those are your options you have. If he were to take, you would have to know that I can't take back with the queen because I would lose the knight. Right? Yes. So would it be worth it for black to take your bishop? Let's say you were to castle queenside. Would there be a benefit to black taking your bishop? That I can't, well, if I've castled, no, there's not as much benefit. Okay, but is there a benefit? Yeah, I mean, you double pawn, you double pawns at that point. And why are double pawns bad? They're not always bad. It's kind of a misconception. Mm -hmm. Center double pawns really can be strong right now because it attacks a lot of forward squares for the knight at that point, or center squares. Okay. Right, but typically they're bad because you're trying to prove that they're a weakness that, that the pawn in front you'll be able to grab at some point and blockade the other one, which then would leave an isolated pawn. Good. So what's a general plan for black after that after this move? What could be a general plan for black right now? Trade trade off the minor pieces and put the heavy pieces on the file. Uh, okay. After. I was I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of blockading this double pawn. This pawn. Okay. Because no pawns can now chase my knight away. And I could yep, blockade it immediately, right? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. All right. And we know that isn't what happened in the game. We, we said, hey, we can attack here. So tell me how many things are wrong with this move. Uh, probably three or four. So you moved a piece twice. Good. Right. That's, a, that's a generally um, a bad thing. 
So you, you postpone development. You're not you're not castled yet at that point either when mm-hmm. you're doing that. You're not really attacking anything either, and you removed one of the defenders for the, the night. Right. So this piece is free right now. Yep, it's hanging. Do you see anything night. else besides the fact that this piece is hanging? Do you see any other threats Black has due to this move? Mm, yeah, you got the uh, fork with yep, E. Yep. Right. And the only fork. problem with the fork is if, if you were to push the pawn there, then the knight could take threatening the queen. Okay. Right? That's That would be... Yep. So this would be attacking something taking or attacking attacking something of greater or equal value equal. than what was being attacked and in this case it would work right because you'd have to take back um yep. because you, you don't run away the queen right and then your bishop can run away and you're good but of course they don't have to do this move first um they could take here first and then they would still have this same threat right yes Okay. The knight covers too. Yep. So you got the bishop, the knight, enough pieces to to go ahead and do this and win a another piece to win a piece. Piece. To win a piece. Yep. Um, and then of course they could just take outright, which is what he did. Okay. He ends up losing the game uh, <laughs> because he gave back candy. But this would be the part that we would talk about. Just uh, one, making sure we. Look at and, and what I say for one of my students for analysis, the first part of analyzing a position, which if you have enough time, if you're playing a slow enough game, and by the way, this game started off at, uh, I think it was 20 minutes each or something? 15, 10. Ah, oh, yeah, 15 plus 10. Beautiful. Good time. Nice time control uh, to give you time to think, but not be so slow that you get bored, right? That you're waiting forever for somebody to move. And you can get more. You can get a few games in in an hour, hopefully. All right. So every time someone moves, I say if you can and you want to just get fast at it. I've been working my brother a lot about the concept of time and speed as being a major factor in ability. Is you want to as quickly as possible be able to analyze the position. And for me, analyzing the position contains a few factors. And the first one is to identify how the position changed based on the last move. So this knight was here. It was attacking these squares. And this bishop only had this scope. So with that move, this pawn now can move. This bishop now has more scope. And this knight has changed. It no longer attacks these squares but it now attacks these squares. These squares. Right. So that, those seem like, oh yeah, that's obvious, but I want them to flash through your mind to say, wait, what happened? The bishop now is free. The knight has different hit, hits. And this pawn is free. That pawn wasn't free before either. And we forget those things. And in fact, what normally happens is, on this move, we forget everything except, oh, that knight's attacking these squares. We don't think about the knight as no longer attacking squares. We don't think about it uncover the bishop, and I'm sure you've experienced where people are not aware of discovered attacks that you lay on them by moving something out of the way. <clears throat> and we miss a lot of times that this pawn now has scope, which doesn't matter in this position, position, yeah. but it could matter in a different position. So those are all the three factors that I actually want you to be aware of how did the position change? And so if we did that count, we might say, oh, there's two attacking this. Okay. Um, oh, he's attacking my bishop and the pawn. Okay. Pawn can move, but I don't care. Um, but okay, so those are the major factors. And by the way, my knight doesn't need to protect this right now. So my knight's kind of free to roam if he wanted to. Uh, that need for protection is gone. All right, so that's, that's the factors that you might say. So the next step, after now I've identified how the position changed, I can think about candidate moves. And when I think about candidate moves, which meaning I want to find three good moves. Candidate moves are good moves, just not moves. They should be good moves. Uh, I want to try to find three candidate moves. Sometimes I can only find two, and sometimes you're forced down to one, right? There's only one good move in a position. Um, so that's okay. You don't have to get three, but we're looking for three. 
But to get to that three, we're going to use what Levy Rosman likes to say. You're going to look for checks, captures, and attacks. Now, he puts threats as the last thing to look at, but I think if you've analyzed how the position changed, you will see all the threats, right? So I like sense. to put the threats first. I can definitely see putting them last because we want you to be more offensive than defensive in nature. It'll make it it's easier to play offensive than it is to play defensive. So I can definitely see why you'd want to put threats last, but I want you to analyze how the position changed more than anything else because you will see opportunities. You will see um, how the game is changed, how the board changes, and the board changes every time you move a piece. All right. Oh, so, like, what does it do? What does it not do anymore? Mm hmm. Yes, this one did. Like this was, one no was, longer. Those are two good questions. This one no longer attacks here, and now it attacks here. This one no longer is blocked, and now has an attack. And this one no longer is blocked, so it has mo mo movement. Hey, Aria, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. All right, so what would you do? Um, what, not what would you do, but now let's go through checks, captures, and attacks. So what checks do you have? Uh, no checks at the current second. Outstanding. What captures could you do? Uh, you have this knight right here, and that's about it as far as captures go, immediate captures. Excellent. Now, we don't want to just identify these things. We're going to look and see if they are... Um, a valuable possible Value. move. So, is that move do you any good? It does. It takes an, an attacker off of this knight. Mm hmm. And, well, and, and by trading right it. Now. Right, right. Right. Yeah. So, it takes away the threat on the knight. All right. And if you were to take, does he have like a brilliant move to destroy you? Because you want to check for that uh, too, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, not really not off the top of my head so you could open up the queen right and trade queens off but that's probably bad for him this is going to stop him from castling then you could castle very good a check right there afterwards so he's going to take this way which gives him a better pawn center or that's what he's supposed to do in the sicilian right take this way yeah yeah probably this. yeah um so that might improve so, his pawns a little bit yep yep um other than that there's not outside of potentially giving him a better pawn center there's not a huge uh, disadvantage in taking that way. Okay. And, and you're moving this knight twice. I, I think there's better moves. Probably. I agree. Like Castling seems, Castling seems stronger because then you're finishing development at that point. This bishop's already semi-developed on this diagonal. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will say this is not developed at all, but we will say that bishops can have scope without yep. development. Yes. Yes. We still, why, and the reason it's not semi-developed in my terminology, I'm not saying that you're wrong, I'm just saying in my, my way of talking, um, is because it's still blocking the rooks. We're talking. Yeah, and the rooks don't really get developed. The rooks just get to get the rest of the pieces off the back rank so the rooks can talk, and we want the rooks talking. So yeah. we still want to develop this, but many openings, it could be delayed a long time. So, yes, it still has scope without, without moving. Okay, so yeah. castling is a good candidate move. Excellent. What's another good candidate move? Uh, H3 to neutralize or kick this knight. And do you want put it to the test? What's it going to do? And what is he? What do you think it's going to do? Uh, he's probably going to take here at that point. Do you believe that he moved this knight for the purpose of taking your bishop? Uh, yes, I do. I agree. So if you move the knight to take your bishop, what does h3 do for you? It forces, I guess it, it relieves some tension. So it gets a it gets a piece off your side of the board at that point. Um, which is, that's that's the main thing I'm doing if I'm going to attack this knight, is I'm just trying to neutralize it or get it off my half of the board so you can finish development with less, less pressure. Interesting, interesting. D does the knight there keep you from finishing development? Does not keep you from finishing development. No. If you castle kingside or queenside, right? All right. You could develop the bishop still. Nothing stopping that, right? All right, so in my mind, the only benefit of h3 is that you help him do what he wanted to do. Yeah, with tempo, I guess. By and you weaken, at that and point. you weaken the h3 pawn, right? Well, not that yep. pawn, right? But you weaken your king side 
So now it's a little less attractive to castle here. So yeah, I, I don't like h3 at all, simply because you're you're encouraging him to do what he was going to do anyway, and and weakening your king side to do so. And instead, you could have developed your bishop. You had multiple, well, not there. You had multiple squares to develop your bishop to, even here, right? That would have also threatened. By the way, this would have also threatened him. And the difference is that if he were to take, which you know you have to take with the pawn because you have a piece that would fall, and you could still castle here and have an open file for your rook, or you could castle here and still have the open file for your rook. The difference is I have a piece developed where the other view would have looked like this, and I'd still have to develop a piece. And I have weak dark squares. Yep. So yeah, this, this move I would not want you to pick as a candidate because it weakens your dark squares, it encourages him to do what he was going to do anyway, and it neglects development. Okay. So I got three reasons not to do that move. All right. That makes sense. All right. All right. Let's let's Castle, go. Castle's the other option, right? Um. Yes. You point. could. Well, Castle was your first one. You said first. Yeah. I okay. like Castle. Take, take the knight. Take the knight or develop the bishop. You could take the knight, uh, but like you said, it actually again that kind of helps black. Black. So yeah. yeah, there's no reason to help black. You took a developed piece that you moved twice because you took a pawn, and you moved it a third time, which right now, again, if we remember, he only has three pieces developed. Now you would have, you are fully developed except for castling, and I do count castling as part of development, so your rooks can talk. So you're this, I mean, you're like one move away from being fully developed. You just threatened him. Chances are he'll take, and you're still one move away from development, and he has to develop both of these, and castle yet so you're one away he's three away you've you've maintained the advantage of the first move and you've left yourself the option to go either way and all of this we're talking about if you notice we're not talking about theory of an opening i don't care about the theory of the opening i care about you playing solid chess and how could you get to where you want to be yep. so this all feels good to me Okay. Let's try. Let's check another game real quick. This one I did not get to look at yet. And you're black, and you win this one also. Another nice win. He does, and this is a known opening that he's playing. So that was interesting. So in general, I like this, right? Um, because yep. you're you're trying to. Uh, give him a question in the center and you're trying to open him up but he takes and then we just move our knight here so I'm lost at uh, I'm, I'm not feeling the benefit of that move as the first choice I actually think d5 was probably a mistake there once you yeah. get the queen here very good so again we look at how the position changed yep all right and so he's obviously he has an attack on your pawn. And so one way to do it is to interpose. That's what you tried. And he just took it with the bishop and said, yeah, okay, I just got a free pawn. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for the pawn. Thanks yeah. for the pawn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so one is to interpose. Another one could be run away, which we could move the pawn. I mean, we could move the pawn, but then we lose the knight. So we don't want to run away. Uh, we could defend it, bada bing, and the other choice is to attack something of equal or greater value. Yeah, you actually could attack something of equal or greater value, because now he still has to deal with the queen. Now, he can't go there, he can go there, and he can't go there. So let's say he were to go here, what could you do? Not saying you should have done this move, by the way. Yeah, you don't want to. Be, I think you, you have to move the knight at this point, right? There's no. No. Do you? Uh, Go through your you options. You don't have to. I guess you could. I guess you could trade off the. Uh, so you could you could play this pawn move and then just capture the bishop. So you can play the pawn move. Can he capture your knight? He, no, because of the queen, actually. Yeah. So yeah. It, there you know, you go. What it do? What wasn't it doing? Yeah. Yeah. 
So Very yes, good. yes, there you go. So you actually active, active defense. There you go. Your your words, not mine. I never use that. I like that though. This is a more active defense because it. This is the defensive part, but then this is the active part, right? Nice, nice. And now he could take here, but could you take could there. take, and could take. and you probably can survive, right? I mean, he's got trouble. He's going to have troubles. He uh, could have also, no, he couldn't. He couldn't get there. Sorry. He had to take the pawn first. So, yeah, you could win the, the bishop, and then we could see what would happen. I mean, he can't just plop this in because he would just lose it. You're going to be able to chase the queen pretty quickly. Yeah, you have this pawn move, too. Oh yeah, that that is a that is a uh, plausible move also. Yeah, that you had that move prior as well when the bishops here. Oh, just just hit, attack him again. Just to hit the hit the queen again. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I like that one. Why wouldn't I like that one? What could White do now that he couldn't do? Well, if you just took it, of course. Well, I guess he can he can he can run with the bishop or well, try to. I don't think he's gonna run and give you the queen. Queen, that's true. Yep, yeah, sorry. So what um, else could he do? Well, he's not going to take. So what else could he do? I mean, now now that you've done this, the reason that this was a problem, and then this was a problem, is because you were removing the defender. That yeah. was the whole purpose of these two moves, was to remove the defender. Even back here, when we made the move in the first place, oops, it was to hopefully the queen would move somewhere and you would take the knight. I mean, take the bishop, trading your bishop. knight for the bishop and stopping his attack. So this is all about removing the defender. So we've removed the defender. If we do things like this, he can go back to defending. Now he's defending the bishop again and he has a discovered attack. If you allow it, he's going to move the bishop with a check. Yeah, your next move has to be knight, knight g6 at that point, right? Knight f6, yes. Or like, f6, sorry. Yeah. And then and then he can remove the bishop, right? Move the bishop, yeah, back. And he's and he's trying to save his, his uh, future here. He just got back, and so he took a pawn, and you got nothing for it. You moved your pawns up, maybe not even in the best position. The knight's on the rim, looking mighty grim. Um, yeah. So he's not upset with this situation. And if you trade, that's yeah, okay. Take, he'll just take. Yeah. yeah, he'll open up the he'll file, but you know. Rook. And that might be your best use of this knight right now, because he lost his squares. Squares, yeah. So taking the bishop probably is the best thing he has, but still, you got alignment issues. You can't castle. Castle. So you're in trouble. All right. Yeah, you have to do it by hand. Okay. So yes, again, we're back to an opening, right? Where we say, okay, maybe you don't know this opening. The first thing I like is somebody offers you free candy and you don't see a reason not to take it. Take it. Take it. So I don't yeah. have a problem with that. Um, here though, you you have decisions to make. Do I want to go this way and then up here? Do I want to go this way and entice this? Is that okay? Is that safe? You'd have to calculate, right? Calculate, and then maybe you can move back here with check again. You'd have to calculate and giving up the center. But you have a free pawn. And then, as you did, you moved here. You can even move here, which would murf this pawn. We call it murfing because now the bishop is going to have a hard time Bishop's getting out. Bishop's locked in. But, yeah, so these are the decisions you have to make. And in general, you probably want that bishop on this diagonal. Where on this diagonal... He's not hitting any really dangerous squares. But on this diagonal, he'd be hitting very dangerous squares if he, and he, again, he, you know, you can guess he's not going to castle queenside because of this open space. Sure, sure, yeah. All right, so based on that, I want my bishop along here if I can. Even if I have to give up the two center pawns for the, you know, because I still have mo both my center pawns, I'm okay with that. So these are the kind of considerations you want about where do I go with my bishop? I want him to end up on a good square. Here yeah, he didn't. Diagonal. Yeah, here he was on a good square. He sacks the pawn to get you off of the good square. And I want to get back to my good square, either here or here, and get back to here. Uh, going this way keeps him from gaining a tempo by attacking me. 
going this way, he'd actually gain a tempo because it would be attacking my bishop. Um, I'll play d4. Yep. So that's what I'd be looking for in that situation. And then when you get to here, right, you have to decide, all right, so if you had protected, and he said, all right, that's what I want, I'm threatening to take your knight now, and then I'm going to check you. So what could you do here? Uh, you still have the knight a5. Maneuver. Yeah, yes, because you can, and this is a rare occasion. So the general principle is we don't want the knight on the rim, but this is an example of, hey, no, sometimes it's the right place for it because it's going to attack both of these guys at the same time. And I want to get rid of this bishop. Now, he could take your knight, and you would take his queen. He could take your pawn, and you would take his queen. So he's got to deal with the queen first. It's, it's um, something of greater value. And if you were to make this mistake, then you would just take with the knight and say, thank you very much. Yep, yeah, but then you're still dealing with the queen. Right. So he's got to move his queen somewhere. He can't even move it here. So he's going to move here here to try to protect the bishop. And I don't care which one, because you would probably just take. He would take back. And now you have to deal with your knight, which is not in the best square, and being threatened by a bishop. So you'd have to decide what you want to do about that. And I'll leave that to you to think about how you'd want to deal with that in the future. Um, but the idea is that this would be a process that you could follow. And you can even yeah. come here to protect the pawn. Um, he's got two on it, though, so he's going to take it. Um, but you could go here, even with an eye back to here, if he tries to chase you. And But again, walking through, trying to figure out how you want to play this, um, play this out. All right, let's do one more. And this is another win for you. Oh, I keep I, You did have a lot of wins when I went out. You're like last four games at the time were all wins for you. So what do you think about that? Where I was. I'm just, and I'm just. It was actually, it's, actually, it's actually a wasteful move. Um, I know it's a wasteful move because F4s or f is the better square for the bishop at this point. Um, so cause you can kick it back. I, I know this when I did this. I was actually trying to get Okay. So my, my, my original thought was I know this is kind of a, not the proper or the book move. Um, he can kick you back, but then you're going to end up on this diagonal anyways. Mm -hmm. Same as if you were here and got attacked, but I was trying to bait him to come in here so I could just take it and double. Okay. Yeah, and, he, and this he can't do, of course, yet. But let's see what he did. He did push the pawn, which pawn. hurts his pawn structure a little bit, but he's also looking okay. Now, he didn't play maybe everything the way he should. He does get a fork, but... You know, I, yeah, why not, right? Because then you get back the material. You just gave back the material, but you're looking better with pawns and, and the position. He's developed zero pieces. <laughs> I mean, you can't usually say that too often. He's developed zero pieces. You've developed two. You're way ahead, two to nothing. And so you're going to get benefits from your, from your aggressive. So you get it, grab another pawn. Um, he had other options, of course, right? We, we know he has options. Uh, but yeah, this one doesn't seem to be bad. I mean, it attacks the queen and it develops a piece. Now, that's an interesting move. What would you have done if you were white? What do you think white should have done here? Played the bishop. Yeah, you, you could probably get away with playing bishop, the bishop. Bishop d2. Probably can. Yeah. Um, now, you drop this pawn, but... Drop you know, this pawn and then the rook gets attacked, but you can just move the rook after towards the d1 mm -hmm. and, so it's and like after a one, d1 it's a one move attack. he he would have went let's just see how that might have flowed um because i mean you're still you're still scaring him you're being scary like if you oh man you know but you can't but you're being scary you know i might even try things like that but the thing is that you're not developing right and in fact i kind of like kind of like here because that square is going to be open if we can move him but anyway the point is though and if you're just greedy and you take more pawns, he's now has three pieces developed, the rook on an open file, and you still have the same two pieces developed. Two pieces out, yeah. Yeah, so you, you want to try to get more pieces developed, not less. Um, so, yeah, it's scary, and this might even be worth it to him, but I, I just don't like the fact he can't castle, right? If he could castle, 
wow, he'd be even with a, even with the material deficit, he'd be he'd be in a um, scary position to and play against you. Got very active pieces, and I got squares galore to go to. Yep. All right. Uh, but that's not what happened, and you decide not to trade. Now you could have traded because you're up a lot of material. Yep. And then you could have taken, and and it's going to be hard for him to do much if you had taken, and he takes back, say, with the bishop to develop another piece. You could finally develop your knight. You could castle queen side. You could push the pawn and then get your bishop out, and then castle king side. And with all the pawns that you've garnered, garnished, yeah, you're you're winning pretty easily. So uh, there is a time that you should consider, do I want to just get rid of the queen? I'm up two pawns, uh, and he's allowing you to trade. Another way to do it would be to move the pawn. Remember, you can protect, we said. Yep. Yeah, you actually get two trades then if you want. If you're trying that's to trade off and simplify down. Cause that's right. Because you take, take this box and you take or whatever. Yep, you could do that. Or you could not take the second time, but yeah. But you definitely can use this to your advantage. And yes, you could have also used the knight first if you wanted to, because then if he takes, you have the fork threat. And on here, you know, he can't go there because you would just take it off. Take it, yep. Snap it off right there. Yep. But even if he could, even if he could, you could say, okay, I'll protect this way now. So yeah, we could trade here, and then you could trade here, and I'd still just trade it off more pieces, which benefits you. Of course, you would yep. just take it, though. Outstanding. All right. So what I really want to do, and, and I don't see that this isn't any specific thing I want you to. I, I don't see you giving away free candy. I did see your opponent give away free candy. I haven't seen you give away free candy. Let me go to a loss just to make sure we're not missing any. Um, I'm not sure of giving candy out. Oh, you do? Okay. So we yeah. want to try not to give away free candy, right? I mean. Uh, I call it free candy. Halloween is over. And uh, free candy happens in one of two ways usually. One is you just hang a piece. Well, actually, a few ways. One is you just hang a piece, right? I mean, you just move a piece into a spot where it can be taken. Okay, so that's just, that's a little bit of carelessness. And it just takes you being more focused and saying, okay, I'm not going to let that happen. All right, look at you. Who, what did he, I'm not even going to ask you what he did, but obviously whatever they said, you banned him for it. Wow. Nice job. Chess Wizard had his first ban as my mod. He said, I didn't even see it, Chess Wizard. Congratulations. You're, you're so good and quick that I didn't even have to, I didn't even get to see the, the statement and you banned him. And I trust you. See, this is the thing between a mod and the streamer. I have to trust your judgment because I don't know what the heck they did. Good job. All right. So, um... Yes. So one is just hanging the piece by just giving it away, right? I mean, it would be like, uh, whose move is it in this? Uh, oh, it's White's move. So like this move, right? This would be just giving it away. Yeah, it's just giving away free candy. Uh, taking here would be miscalculation. You're like, well, I got a bishop. Yeah, but a bishop's only worth how much? Three. And the rook is worth? Four and a half or five, based on what book you read. <laughs> oh, really? I have not seen four and a half yet. So, um, cool. Five is what I've always seen, but it doesn't matter. It's worth more than a bishop. Uh, so, yeah, you'd be giving away free candy. Now, it's not the full piece of candy, right? You gave away uh, 1.5 pieces of candy or two pieces of candy instead of three, but um, or instead of five, I should say. But, okay. So, it's still giving away free candy. Another one is what we talked about where you miss, like, the discovered attack. But here's an example, like if white went here and black said, oh, okay, I'm going to develop my bishop, miscounting the fact that white can now take the bishop is a type of missing free candy, right? Because you take yeah. and you go, well, no, I could take back. But yeah, if you take back, then it's even more. Defended. Yeah. So sometimes it's just miscounting how many defenders and how many attackers there are. That's a way of giving away free candy also. So if you find yourself just putting pieces in pre, right, like, uh, you know, just doing this kind of move, uh, there's not much I can do besides give you exercises to spot free candy, but also where you start saying, okay, I can't do these things. You know, I can't just give it away. But what I like to do is uh, help you mostly with work on not opening moves, but principles. 
And so from what I'm seeing in your games so far, I, I would love for you to get better at analyzing the position, identifying the, um, how the position changed. Now later, um, let's, let's go in this order. Usually it's, I analyze the position, see how it changed. After I know how it changed, I'm going to look for checks, captures, and attacks. That's very basic, and it's good for speed chess, blitz, rapid. You could do that in all of those. If I'm playing classical, I want to do not only how the position changed, and I can still look for checks, captures, and attacks, but then I want to add to it, I want to identify weaknesses and strengths. I want to know what is my strength. Like in this position, I have one bishop to develop, um, you know, I can, I can, I know that I'm being under attack. I can go for alignment and see maybe if I pile up here, maybe I could get good things to happen. But for right now, I probably just want to, I just want to get the bishop out from under attack because I need to get this bishop developed. So this will gain me a tempo. He'll move somewhere. And then I can, I can hopefully gain tempo and get this bishop into the game. And once I've developed all of my pieces, I need to come up with that masterful that magical plan and that plan is usually going to be based on strengths and weaknesses so you know what are my strengths what are my weaknesses are there strong points to attack are there weak points to attack but that's later right now i just want to get you to be clearly identifying how a position changed and then checking for checks captures and attacks are we good with that do you think do you think that's a fair yeah, that sounds good. starting yep. point sorry i'm writing it down yeah, no worries. No worries. All right, so we need an opponent. You can maybe even get the uh, champion of the world uh, under 2,000 to play you. Oh, yeah, great job, Chess Wizard. Told you I, I trusted you. How much? <laughs> Thanks, Busy. Thanks. All right, I need a challenger for Patroclus 513. Uh, should be a casual game because I'm going to make him talk. Uh, I'd like it to be like maybe, let's see how much time do I have. Going on 12, I have another half an hour. So maybe 10 plus 5. So a 10 plus 5 casual challenge to Patroclus 513 on Lee Chess. I would love for somebody to do that. We will watch your game. And we'll ask you to think out loud. Which, again, unless you stream, you probably don't do that that often. But I'll ask you to think out loud. I might even ask you questions during your game because it's only a training game, guys. So that's why it's casual. Uh, but I'm going to try to stay out of it. But I do want you to think about and hopefully analyze out loud how the position changes. And you can even do that from move one. I'm going to show you an example real quick because you would want to do it real quick. So they play here. How the position changed. The bishop is free. And you can't, right, you could draw arrows here on this. But you won't be able to, we won't be able to see your arrows. See them on the board. Yeah, so you'll just have to tell us. So, yes, the bishop is free, the queen is free, and the pawn is now attacking two center squares. Also, the king is free. Not that he'd use it, but the king is free. And then you might say, okay, I'm going to do that. Or uh, I think you've played the Carol Khan. I don't know what you play. But, um, nah, I'll play, I'll play e5 or Sicilian usually. Okay. All right. So, again, you know, and you'd say, say you could just say, same same things for me, but also that pawn can no longer move. All right, so you can also analyze how the position changed after your move. But your goal in the opening is, so I'm going to give you two things. One is I want you to go through that litany. How did position change, checks, captures, and attacks? But then, because I really don't care about you memorizing opening theory or lines, they're synonymous as far as I can tell, uh, even though I would love for theory to be more like opening concepts, but they don't. They call theory lines. I want you to develop your pieces as fast as possible. I want you to can be concerned with king safety, and I want you to be concerned with controlling these four center squares. So that's that's the goals in the opening. Now I didn't make you because we're we're short on time because I want you to get a game in. Um, what I usually tell people is, what are the five goals in the opening? And please do them in priority order. And I will just tell you. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. You can do it. What's the number one goal in the opening? Uh, develop your pieces. Yes, as fast as possible. As possible. Rapid yes. development. Yes. What's the second most important goal in the opening? Uh, castle. Nope. 
You're thinking king's safety, by the way, which doesn't always mean castle. Sometimes you're safer if you stay in the middle. But, nope, that's number uh, four. Center, center control. That's number five. All right, so it's not connecting the rooks, center control, or king safety. Nope. Connecting the rooks would be just part of development, by just the way. Just part of development. Okay, so you clarify so if I add under that. Um, I'll know you stumped me on two then. Yeah, I did. And on three, you don't know what number three is either. So do you know anything? Right. By the way, I was thinking about investing. Do you know anything about real estate? No, location. What Squares, right? Location, location, location. So guess what it is for, uh, well, guess what it is for the opening? Develop, develop, develop. Oh. Those are your first three goals in the opening is develop, develop, develop. That's how important it is that we say it three times. All right. All right. So, so, so out of the five, development is three of them. Yes, yes, you got it. <laughs> I try to keep things simple here. Development of the third power. Again. Yes, yes. All right. Hey, Alpha. Thank you, Chess Wizard, for welcoming Alpha Canis Major. All right. So we need an uh, opponent. Did anybody challenge you yet? Yeah, you know, Chess, Chess Wizard sent a, uh, an invite right here. I was waiting. He's a nice guy, and I appreciate you he waiting. He's a nice guy. Okay, um, we're going to look at it from, Patro Klus, from Patrick's point of view, of course. And uh, go ahead, and you can accept it, and we should take us. There it is. All right, so we'll be watching, and we'll be listening. All right, perfect. So <clears throat> just like we started off in the example, opens up the bishop, opens up the queen. So we'll fight back in the center with five and then he's got a choice pretty much of italian scotch or lopez right should be so i find it interesting that you know the names of the openings which is cool not necessary but cool uh, nah yeah it's a it was a waste of hours spent so remember tell you gotta <laughs> tell us how the position changed just now all right, so so right now he developed this. What well, you would say your knights are the least active pieces in, in the opening, right from their starting squares. So really, this knight now attack now attacks this pawn. You think well, it's the least active? It's the only one that can develop this it, without moving a pawn. It is, but if you move, but once you move a pawn, your bishop covers more squares than a knight on that its true. square. That is true. That so. well, so is true. Well, it's or is it? Let's see. That bishop covers. One, two, three, four, five squares. Yeah. And if you count G2, but that isn't based on the fact that it moved, right? No. How about how many squares does the knight cover after it moved? Uh, the knights you got, uh, you should have right here, right? Eight. Eight. So actually the knight is covering more squares than the bishop. But the knight, but the bishop is covering more squares across the Same. midline, across the marginal line by one. Yeah. Just by one. So, okay, I'm just working process, with... Thought process, would be... You, you, no, no, it's fine. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I, I studied a lot of Smirnov courses back in the day. I liked a lot of his thought process. Okay. Which I... which he was real big on, like, similar to you, which I like, is uh, thinking process. Like, you need a system. Okay. A thinking system, right? Okay, good. Um, good. So, right here, right here, you protect. Yes. And how did the... And remember, after his next move, I need you to tell me how the position changed. After his next right, move, you got to tell us how the move. position yep. changed. Changed. Not just what's going on, but how did it change? What was it before, and now it's different. Yeah. So now he gives himself the right to castle on, on okay. the next move. Excellent. He also he also puts a, a pressure on F7, which is you got the, this potential okay. attacking idea here um, to come down. So how else did it change? So the bishop changed because now it also hits on b3, d5, five. e6. Yep, so he's attacking through the center and then on the f7 pawn. And he can and castle. And he gave himself the right to castle. Yep. Right, so those on are the, the only bit. changes that we see, correct? Yes. Okay, so then, then you decide, is any of those changes of giant threat to me? And if none of them are a threat, then you can go on with whatever you want to do. Right, with is check for checks, which this is so early, it's easy. Yep. Check for captures, easy. There are none, and then for attacks, which there probably aren't many. And so then the last thing you would do is say, okay, there's none of those. I'm gonna just do what I'm supposed to do in the opening and fulfill those first three goals. Hundred 
marketing point difference. Yep. So the only move order trick that most people try to do on this is if you pull this knight out right here, they try to get into some type of fried liver attack, right? uh -huh. which can get a which can get a little dicey or sharp. Okay. Um, Bishop c5, like keeping symmetrical is usually a pretty solid option right here. It yep. eliminates all of this jazz. By the way, there is another mantra I will give you besides develop, 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 king safety and center control. There's another mantra I'll give you for for development, but I'll, I'll wait till after the game. All right. But yeah, that's a solid move, right? You developed a piece. Yeah, you're looking good. Now, during his move, Normally, you think you try to guess at what they're going to do, but he already moved. Oh. So, yep, C three, it's it does a few things, right? So you're trying to prep D four at this point so that you come with tempo, okay, or potential tempo. Um, it takes away this square from the knight, so at this point in time, this knight can't really go anywhere. So he almost has to play it um, here in the next few moves. So that's the main the main point I see in this move is you get to come here, try to hit this bishop with tempo and okay. development, right? So, so you're telling me the point, which is great, because you're actually telling me, the way I, I think of it is you're telling me why he did what he did, which is great. Yep. I, so, I actually, so that what, is, I was going to give you that later to do, but you're starting yep. with that. You're saying, why did he do so, that? Here's why I think he did that. So that's fine. That's good. Um, you're you're ahead. Can, Yep. So he weakens D, you know, with C3. So what does something do and what does it not do anymore? Yes. Uh, Chess Network had that question. So he weakens technically this pawn covered uh, B3 and D3. So okay. it can no longer cover B3 and D3 in the future. It now also covers uh, D4 and B4. Okay. And what else changed? Um, he also then opens up the queen along the... Uh, D1, A4 diagonal right here. Excellent. What else changed? Uh, two, two, two. You kind of talked about it a little bit when you said that he had to do something because... He has to... Well, he wants to play D3 or D4 to yeah, be but, able to but get but his Yeah, but you said scope. something that that pawn move also changed something. Oh, it changed that it doesn't defend these squares anymore. It doesn't. Does, right. Sorry, you can't see my drawing. D three and B B three. Right. No you said that. Defend. You said that one. And now he's attacking E four, uh, D four, and B four. Yeah. But you didn't mention that the knight can no longer go to C three. Yes. You talked about it early, but in a different context. All right. So yeah, the knight. He, he he ruins his knight scope, which means he has to. He almost ha is forced to play in the next few moves D three or D four, and to some extent. Right. Typically D4 because, you know, is what he's going to play because it's the most forward available square. Yep, and that's what you did say at the beginning. But, okay, good, good. So now we've identified how the board has changed. You have to decide what you want to do about it, if anything. Yep, so you kind of know D, and I hate that you can't see my drawing. You kind of know D4 is coming right now. Okay. It's black just in this this line typically. Yep. Um, my candidate moves are you can play knight. You can just develop a knight because it's a quick hitting piece. Okay. So the thought process is, or the line that I kind of know of. Whether Go ahead and make the move and not, tell us not, afterwards then, because you're getting low on time. Go ahead. You can make the move. Oh, he can he can add time, right? That's true. That's true. Uh, and chess wizard will, <laughs> usually. Yeah, that's 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 what I kind of figured. Yeah, he's a nice guy. So you, you develop this knight and give yourself the ability to castle here. Now this fried liver stuff is kind of garbage because you can just go ahead and castle. And if he wants to play that game, I'll just give up the rook for two pieces. Okay. So there's a few ways to play this, actually, I was thinking of before that I've seen a lot of people do or just playing games. Some people won't develop them. The bad, the bad idea is, develop, is to push the pawn. Um, there's also a rule I've been told before. Or a theory in a lot of openings, I guess you said, or concept is when they play C three, you can play D four right away. Yep. Um, so you Not could play D four right here okay. as well. Besides the knight, I guess actually you probably want the knight first because then you put two, you put the queen and the knight as both attackers on this D four square. Um, I know a line right here which he'll probably. F well, okay, so he didn't play it. So if he plays D four instead uh -huh. of D three, the line is you can take. He has to take back. You have this check. Right. right. You have a check on B4. Right. And then what you can do is, is you can bring the knight in to take on E4 on that piece. So you add, you end up adding two attackers because your bishop's covered on B4 by your knight on C6. Yep. And then you can 
you can bring and take the pawn on e4 when he plays d4 actually and you're just going to exchange a bunch off on on d2 um gotcha. so he played this right now so which is kind of like the quiet version of the game when he plays d3 so what's changed is he now reinforces e4 um he no longer uh is he the pawn no longer protects e3 right e3 or c3 he is now protecting d4 with another piece and it opens up his bishop right it opens up this bishop diagonal now to potentially come down and pin on g5 um he also now can play d you know part of the italian structures a lot of the times or lopez he can play d3 a little slower so he can come down here next i just go ahead and play i think your candidate moves are castle um or d6 um, I typically will say d6 because he has not castled yet either. So his king's in the center. So you develop this bishop. will give this bishop a little bit more scope Okay. at that point. And you still have this whole ability that if he now plays d3, d4, and wastes the pawn move in two moves, you can still play this whole um, d takes e, or e takes d and end up with the check, with the bishop check. In the knight moves. So we'll play d6. You're also not like the benefit of to me of playing d6 here is you haven't castled yet so you can still kind of be flexible on if you want to castle queenside thank okay. you for adding time chess wizard um because if he plays this bishop g5 line mm -hmm. the pin the knight you can actually just go ahead and play h5 and then kick it back again with g6 and then that bishop when it comes to g7 is going to end up being on a bad diagonal that runs into your pawn chain so it actually undevelops the bishop if he wants to get into that line and allows you to castle queen side okay so I, I, i'm impressed with the amount of knowledge you have i want you to make sure that you're doing the analysis so how did the position just change so right now when you plays h3 you are weakening g3 right but this pawn can no longer protect g3 um he's also trying to stop or limit the scope of this bishop coming to g4 and getting into pins on his f3 knight at that point so he the... gave us he gave his rook a little more scope one square so if you don't mind uh, a minor and calibration if you don't mind a minor calibration um you said correctly the pawn moved so therefore it no longer protects g3 you went on to say it was weakening the square which is correct i'm not arguing your your knowledge is good um you did say that also the pawn moves here and it prophylactically keeps the bishop out of g4. You are again correct. But what I want you to first focus on is that the pawn simply is attacking g4. And the reason I want okay. you to be that simple is because maybe he was thinking knight to g4. So the reason I want you to keep it simple on how the position changed is it, it will not... I'm trying to get it so it doesn't um that you're not working off of preconceived ideas of what he may be doing it for and instead looking at it holistically and just seeing oh that square is now under attack by a pawn pretty simple way to look at it right and because yep. it's under attack by a pawn maybe his thought is he he's going to push g4 or other ideas who knows but we just want to make yeah, what, sure we what is it attacking versus what it's taking away kind yeah of. just think that about the sense. change and it's okay to think about what it's yep. taking away but do it in the context of it is now hitting that square that's how the board changed how that change affects black in this game is now you don't want to put your bishop there and the other part would so there's well, how did the board change how does it affect you and why did he do it and we're blending all three every time. And I just want to make sure that you're, I want to hear you make sure you identify the first step, which is just how the board changed. And then, yes, you want to look at how it affects you and you want to get a good guess at why he did it. And that's what I'm saying. Those are both perfect things you're doing, but I, I want to make sure we're not neglecting that first key component of it, which is just making sure you identify how it changes. It's a different way of thinking a little bit because you already got the last two. You've been doing the last two every move. So I want you to think a little bit differently. Make sure that you cover that first phase. But go ahead. It, so, yes. So the idea of what it attacks. So, you know, we also didn't say it weakens the king side a tiny bit. Um, 
I guess you could also say on the idea of attacking is it gives an outpost for him on G4 at some point, actually. Right? That's, that's yep. now an outpost for him. Um, I think your candidate moves are typically, it's a weak developing bishop move, and you don't know what you want to do with this light squared bishop yet. It doesn't have a lot of range. You know, it can't go to G4, can't go to F5. Uh, you could bring it to E6 and trade it off if you want to get into this mess. Then you're going to end up doubling your pawns right there, um, or you go, or you bring it to d7, which doesn't seem. It's basically doing the same job where it is right now. So castle's probably your best move um, at this point right now, and let white. Let's see what white's going to do next, right? Okay, how the board change? <laughs> so right now to change that he's attacking this knight on f3. So he's bringing his bishop down to attack this. And knight. remember, he's you also no now longer, has no access. Go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say he's no longer defending B2 either. Very good. No longer defending B2. He has he is now attacking F6, and he's also now hitting H4. Yep. So right those here. are the three differences. I mean, that one's a pretty quick one, right, that you can do, but those are the three differences. And it's beautiful that you do that. Thank you. Because that lets you know that the pawn on b2 is no longer defended, which, by the way, I will tell you, most people will never realize. Because all they're going to see is that the bishop is attacking the knight, and that's all they all that even comes to mind. And so we want to make sure we see that, oh, and b2 is no longer protected. Cool. Okay. So my original pr thought process in the position right now, kind of, is whether or not, I think, potentially a, a6 a minute ago. Okay. Would have been a good waiting move besides castling. Now that I'm thinking back on it right now, hindsight. Um, a6 frees a hide a, a tuck square for this bishop in case you get into this kind of mess right here where you have three people up on d4 now attack. Yes, and but you had mentioned that the rook had the square b2, but also I mean h2, but you also are realizing yes, it's also h2 is now open. For the rook or who, but it's open. Okay, good. That's the more simple way of thinking of it. H2 is open, and yes, the rook could go there. The knight could have went there, but now the bishop has a tuck spot when you chase him. Beautiful. Okay, okay. pressing so, on. So right now... Checks, captures, I and attacks. Don't. Have any? Yep. So, uh, there is one check if you sacrifice on... Mm -hmm. um, F2 right okay. now, which doesn't seem to work out because you have nothing to follow it up with. Excellent. So you, so you just lose the bishop, so it's kind of a So you big can skip threat. that one, right? Any other checks? Yeah. Uh, two, 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 no other checks currently. Any captures? Um, captures, you can capture on E4 with the knight, but that hangs your queen, so it's probably not advisable. And... So no, no other captures. So then you go into attacks, which you probably have knight a5 to then threaten this light squared bishop. I guess he, he ultimately lose the bishop if you play knight a5. I think he does. Lose it or trade it? So you have it. this move. You, well, you trade it off, sorry. You can trade off this knight for a bishop if you want right now. Okay, that's actually, not, have, that's actually not accurate, but I hear you. And it's not a I bad... I guess it's not. I guess he can, he can move here, right? So he can move... Sorry, you can't see my errors. He can move B5 then, I guess. And right, and after B5, try, you try could chase with a pawn, then he could move to A4, and then you could chase with a pawn, and then he get to move all the way back to yep. C2. All the way back, yep. So So you can't force a trade with, of the bishop, but force a trade. I'm with you. Yep. You can threaten it, I guess, and yeah. see if he makes a mistake, which that's kind of a one-move threat, so I guess maybe it doesn't make sense. If I can... Typically, my thought is if you can trade a knight for a bishop in most positions, you should... Um, not a, usually a bad trade to get the bishop paired towards the end game. Okay. Um, so I think the most pressing the most pressing thing right now is the pressure that he's got on f6. And is that pressing? Is that bothering you? Uh, it does a little bit. Why? It, I guess it's it's frustrating to play with, right? As a chess player, because you you know he's tying your queen down and potentially doubling your g pawn, your uh, your f pawns, right? Potentially there. correct. Agreed. Um. Actually, I think it's a problem, typically, in this position. So you probably want to play h6 and attack this bishop and get it off your side of the board. Okay. Um, or, for, or force him to go ahead and trade this bishop for a knight, which we're typically okay with because you get the bishop pair, and then you end up playing queen to f6 right here. Okay. 
So H6 is my premier candidate move. Okay, so my only uh, other option for you would be if the knight was on c3 and could get to d5, I would totally agree. Since he can't double the knight up... knight was on c3. Yeah, so yeah, because he's, he's not... Uh, he can't actually take this and have a threat without the knight. Yeah, right. I know what you're so saying. since he can't if double you up on your piece, knight, you I'm less that. concerned. Less. Not that I'm not concerned, but I'm less concerned about the pressure. I would still want you to possibly develop your pieces. That would okay. be the other option, right? Just, hey, let's develop our pieces. But also now, you know, is where if I can develop my pieces, maybe I can, because can you find a good development move right now? How many pieces do you have left to develop? You have two. So right. you got to develop your queen and your bishop. And the queen doesn't really have any place don't. to go because if the queen goes to e7, you didn't change anything. Nope. And if you go to d7. And if you go to d2. You have you block in your light squared bishop. And he could take your knight and double your pawns. Yep. So how about the bishop? Does that have any squares to go to? Uh, the bishop can go to really only... Well, you could sacrifice on the h-pawn, which doesn't really gain you anything. Correct. So I guess that's technically a, an attack you have or is capture. Yes, yes. Um, you, could go to, you can go to e6 and try to trade off this bishop and just say you're okay with doubled pawns taking up centered squares of f5 and d5. I guess that's what would change in the position if you do that, right? If that yeah. trade ends up happening. Yeah, and, um, and you it would also, free you, give you a free alley for your rook. Rook, yep, yeah, would open up the rook now. The um, rook would be protecting the knight so your queen could move without having to worry about the other pawn being doubled. Okay. And if taking towards the center means that you should quickly be able to take again i mean push eventually d5 right because, d5 right maybe yep. it's playable because d5 now now d5 has an extra um or d5 is an extra pawn defending it when you push it something for you to consider yep. so that would be another candidate move for me so bishop e so six e6, would be a candidate e, move yep yep e6 and e7 e7 doesn't really change much though E6 probably changes more. Um, yep. I look at like, like your two probably main candidate moves should be Bishop E6 or H6 attacking the Bishop at this All point. right, pick one. So we're not um, we don't care about winning this game. It's he keeps giving you time anyway because we're learning. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting because my typical I haven't really thought of playing this. I kind of want to play this E6 line that you brought it up because I haven't thought of playing that. that way. Go ahead. It's just for fun, right? It's learning. Yep. I've typically played this H6 line. Which then he should go g4. He's either got to go g4 or take, and then you can play g g5. And it looks scary that you're weakening your king side, but he's also hasn't castled yet, so he's got to waste time there. Mm -hmm. And because his knight his knight's on c3 and he can't get to d5, you can kind of get away with starting to push on the king side. Your choice. Pick one. one do we want to do we will go we will try your the bishop maneuver because i haven't played this line and it seems interesting all right so now he develops this knight so what's changed is now his knight has scope on e4 and f3 right okay. and he's also protecting the bishop on c c4 and p3 okay good um he gets himself a little closer to fully developed, so you can now move the queen and castle queen side if you really wanted to. Good. Uh, it also gives him the ability to not ruin his pawn structure if you trade off this bishop. Good. By, by taking with the knight, and he gives himself an outpost there at the same time, I guess, technically. Oh, well, a temporary outpost, because you can end up pushing it with b5. Excellent. So your now checks your haven't are... changed. Your checks are the same. Your attacks, are your same. captures, uh, captures a little different because you could take bishop takes bishop, but other than that, your your captures don't change. So these are things you could go quicker now, because you're like, well, I know same capture is there. So, and then your attacks, yep. your but again, okay. So what can I do? Do I want to push the bishop? Get rid of the bishop on g yet? Is that starting to scare me yet? Or can I do other things? Now the queen would be the last piece you want to develop. But I can very well be happy with you not moving it to, say, d7 and, again, doubling up your g-pawn or even moving it to e7 and just allowing him to still, right, it doesn't, it doesn't make a big difference. 
So I'm happy yeah. with you not moving the queen, even though that would be the next piece to develop, and maybe looking for other things you could do. So let's let's think about taking right now. So if you take the bishop and he takes with the knight, what changes for him, right? Is that he mm -hmm. now develops his knight to c4, and then the question is, which gives him scope on b5, a5, d, d6, or sorry, uh, b6, a5, d6, uh, e5. So then the question is, can you kick him? And if you kick him, where can he go? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, if you kick him, he can get away. Right? He can run away. So you can, if you kick him with b5, he can go to a5. Well, you know, he can't go to a5. Knight takes knight. Okay, so let's kind of take, take. Sorry, I need arrows for myself for a second. All right. And does he have to go back? I guess he does. So that's the interesting point. I kind of want to play, so a6 is a candidate move just to get tuck my bishop away and see what white wants to do. Okay. The other move is h6, but I, I don't like h6 because then if he takes you really weak in your queen side now, or king side now at this point, by playing h6 and having to take with the g-pawn, I don't like that. Kind of like taking the bishop and then maybe seeing how we want to kick this knight around with a6 and a6 and b5 maybe okay i'll let you i'll let you play out the rest of the game because we're running out of time and i want to be able to but actually we're reviewing yep. as we go usually i stop you and i don't say anything and we review but we've been doing it throughout because i'm really trying to force you to do that analysis of how the position changed focusing less on uh potential of what people can do and won't do and why they did it not the why and the how it you know what can i do but just the understanding of what's different. So even as a little minor thing for you, you said the knight went here and it's now hitting f3 and e4, but then you said it's defending c4. You didn't say it's hitting c4. You said it's defending c4. the bishop. Yeah, you actually claimed you remembered the bishop, right? And the, the only yep. difference in my thinking for you is I want you to think about the spaces. Yes, there's a bishop there. But I just want you to think about the spaces. And by the way, we didn't say the bishop can't go back to d2 now because the knight is in the way. And I don't remember you saying, which you might have, that the queen can't go to d2 because the knight is in the way. The knight's in the way. And I didn't hear you say the other knight can't go to d2 because the knight is in the way. In the way. So that's thinking of that's the funny. spaces yeah. and the squares versus thinking about the pieces and what people can do. Okay. okay, so uh, Chess Wizard, if you want to give them like maybe a couple of minutes and then you guys could just play out the rest of the game. But those are the things I'm trying to get you. Chess, I want to make sure you're seeing the spaces and how those, how the situation changed with the spaces regardless of what's in those spaces. Cool? Okay. All right. You I guess guys the other thing we didn't, we didn't calculate in here is, cause, is your attack on this bishop, like these two bishops having contact with each other, yep. is if you can now play knight a5 and hit this bishop and force yes. him to move again or force the trade. Yeah, and again, he, and he gets into the same boat as before that he can probably get back. Can he get back to, to c2? Right. Maybe. And so that's where I was thinking that a6 might be a potential move because after a6, now he can't get away. Way. Yep. A6 and then your, and your then threat B5. is knight to a5. Yep. That's what I, I don't like saying. a6 because a6 allows you to tuck this bishop away if you want to right now. Right? Uh, you need to take it. Yes, and it also gives same. you a haven for your dark bishop. bishop yeah. So that's the way I was thinking, square. right? I was thinking I can I can take away the square, and and I'm going to be able to trade the bishop by force, and I have a place for my dark bishop. I'm liking it. A6 seems like the way to go. All right, so you could just go ahead and play the rest of the game. That is the major thing I want you to focus on. Enjoy the rest of the game. I'll stay here with you. Um, we won't go over the game because we went over it as we played it. Played, yep. Okay, but then I'm going to be looking for your next opportunity, your next game you play. We're going to be looking for you doing those things, right? That That would be what I want you to do is play a slower game and make sure... Even more important than checks, captures, and attacks right now is I just want you to review how the how the position changes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go get my other computer so I can do work in the background. <laughs> so you keep talking because like you're my only entertainment for the viewers. Oh, I. <laughs> well, I can 
can be your work entertainment. Your, your mind as well a lot of times. But keep so playing. I'm, I'm I'll be back. The, I'm repaying the favor. Awesome. Uh, so now you have b5, gaining space and hitting the bishop with tempo, or knight a5 to attack this this light squared bishop on c4. Two, 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 two. That was a good fork, and that's why we played B5. That hurts. Good move, Chess Wizard. Gotta give up one. So I ran myself into the giving the pieces away. The ah! fourth, B5. B5 would have been the move. Oh, what happened? Sense when you look back on it. Well, I thought A5 of moving the piece instead of a pawn to hit this bishop, but then it walks right into that. Okay, that yes. Right yes. Let's Which, see. Boom, boom. You got to give up boom. one, so you might as well gain something for it, right? So you might as well take with the bishop and then move the knight. Sure. Sucks because you want to keep this bishop on this long diagonal, though. So what are you going to take, though? You have options. Well, you can only take the pawn right now. The pawn? A pawn. The pawn on B um, or F. The F or B pawn is Ah, you yes. Take. You have two choices. Actually, you can take here, take, take, and if he comes here... Do you have? I guess you can. Knight. I like taking the B pawn. I guess open up his rook. And the good thing, busy, is it's. I just need to attend. I don't need to actually participate. And we'll go here. piece wasn't good yeah that's okay but you know and and again if we're looking at how the position changed each time we should see that the knight and the bishop are aligned for a pawn fork possibility that's all right okay. yeah okay but that's okay I, i'm i'm happy with what we're getting to learn together i appreciate that get our So now he's got three three attackers on e5. Active his rooks. Oh, there's two ways to defend it. Me, which are most obvious, are d, knight d7 or rook 7. I guess the rook's the least active, so we'll do it with the rook. My other thought is you try to sidestep this knight out of the way right here from that capture, but I guess it doesn't change a whole lot yet. Good. 
bishop here. Try and remove the defender so we can take exchange off on e5 right now. Question is, can you push this to take? So can you push e4? Seems as true. center down so we're behind a piece time that was fun though think d3 think d3 yep sorry good fork i need to tell him good fork i was kind of trying i wasn't talking as much trying to with low time control yeah yeah no worries yeah you don't have to worry about all or, well when it was down on time and we spent so much time on the bending my next move i was thinking about was if d4 worked right here yeah why not because it kind of forces him he has to deal with his queen at that point right yeah That's what does he do i mean because his rook would be hanging also. Yeah, and that kind of evens out material. Hey, bit. see you later, Chess Wizard. Thank you very much. All I right. I guess he can take, right? Take with what? Uh, can he take on e4? I guess he can take on e4, but then it hangs the rook. So if let he let takes me show with the queen the... on e4, it hangs the rook. Let me just remind you of the power of Lee Chess. So if you go back to your study that I shared with you. Second. Study. Learn studies I contribute to. Studies. Right, right here, Tiberian three days ago. Okay. And you'll see the this last game. Here. I already put it in yep. there with Chess Wizard. Yep, I see it. I'm on it. Oh, no, let's go to the last. I want to go to the very end. 
and look at what you said. You were thinking about making that move. Does it work? Yep. Those only captures are here, 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 right? Queen can take D4 also. I guess, yes, yeah, sorry, that's why I have that right here. Okay, so. The queen takes D4, you can still take the rook. Yep. I guess maybe. Uh, I don't think it works because the piece down, you just end up losing because he's and just going to end up and taking And by the way, the, would you take with the rook the or would you take with the queen? I was thinking you take with the queen. Why? Because then it forces the exchange. You win the piece then. Like you win the rook and you force the exchange to the queens. Then you go into a game where you got two rooks versus a, a knight and a rook at that point. Okay. I don't know that you're, it you're also then a, You're also then attack. You're also yes. then attack. Well, you makes it more logical. You're also then doubling. You have a lot of threats on F7's got you know, three attackers on it. If Very he just good. avoids the queen. And your rooks stay connected until he takes back. Okay. I didn't think of that, but that makes sense still. Okay. That these get connected right here. So he has to, I mean, he has to move the queen at that point, which loses the rook. Yeah, if right. he takes here, your queen is protected, so you get the free rook. If he takes here, you get the queen. So yeah, that, that's a playable move. Yeah. Very playable move. That was off the thought of my head with low time control was the next move. Yeah. It had to be the next move. I'm not sure if this playing this A pawn before was right, though. When did I push it? That move. Well, it does remove the defender. Defender, that was my thought. And was gave that you this option. Forcing you, forcing you here yeah. to get rid of this outpost, the outpost for the rook there. Now, what he, what he probably could have done was just that if he wanted to. That. And trading off stuff trading off, isn't as trading bad off benefits you because, but you have connect four, so you win. Okay. <laughs> that's that's what my son says when I started teaching him to play. He's like, hey, that's a pawn chain. <laughs> there you go. I got four in a row. I win. All right. right. Um, so busy wants to look at. Can you go back a few moves after knight to e five? After knight to e. Five. Okay, knight to e five. Here, right, busy. I think the knight was hanging. Knight takes d four, and the knight's hanging um, because you get to take with check. If he takes first, threatening your queen, your check, yours is a check, check, and then he loses the knight. Right, Busy? Is that what he's saying? Okay. Um, I don't know, though. He does get this move, right? I guess you could still go here, though. No, you can't. You lose the rook here. Rook takes... From here, oh, rook just takes knight. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, duh, duh. Sometimes I get blind. Yep, I was just looking at and protecting, but there's no protection because it only had a pawn protecting it. Yep. So right here, yeah, yeah that's that's, a, that's beautiful, busy. Busy saw that, that real quick move. too. That's why busy is so strong. He is. He sees these things and he sees it quickly. I yeah, know. just he take away the defender. The other day. So. In this situation, if we said, how did the position change with this move, right? Let's think about that. How did the position change? The knight was protecting. Protecting. Yep, he's no longer defending the d4 pawn. These are the squares the knight was hitting. The knight is no longer hitting, and the knight is now Attacking. hitting these. Sorry. So we have choices. We can deal with this attack, or we can remember what you could do. You could attack something of equal or greater value. Oh, and I showed you, when it's right, it's gorgeous. So here you're yep. attacking something of greater value. And because that knight no longer is protecting that pawn, it's available, which you miss normally because we miss because we're only concerned about what this knight is doing now, not what was that knight doing before. Before, yeah, what was it doing and what is it no longer doing? Correct. So it's very important to know 
to remember what was that knight doing? It was protecting here. Now, even before you push this pawn, chess wizard could say to himself, okay, I'm going to do this. He's either going to take or push. If he takes, he loses the game basically. So he's going to push, right? Or he might let me take, or he might take with this. But if he takes with that, I get a free knight. Okay. So chess wizard could have thought through all of that and then say, okay, well, you're probably going to do this. What do I do next? And he could say, well, I could do one of these, but how will the position change? Well, the position changes here, same as the position changed here. That pawn was helping protect. And Nimzovich would say, by the way, this is the point that you want to overprotect as white. And this actually stops part of the protection and allows black to occupy it. And so that's actually a mistake in general per Nimzovich. And then, and then we see it come to fruition with bazaars. Um, Busy's um, identification Idea. of it, right. that yeah. this is in trouble. Now, if the king wasn't going to be in check, then you could take, he could take, and you could take, and then you'd, you'd be doing, a white would be winning because he'd get a rook and a queen versus a knight and a queen. But it isn't. There's a check here. So that knight was protecting. It's no longer protecting. And so it's a viable move. And in this case, it's a great move because you take with check and then you get to take back and you're winning. It's Very funny, nice. I even thought when I got the, I even thought when I, it well felt like the feeling of when you got the play E5 that that equalized the game in some way, even though you were a piece down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're looking good. Or at least make it closer to equalizing like the feel of the position. And that's, and then missing that's, is rough because it allows that that's interesting yeah it's no longer attacking e4 yes. right not defending because that's that's i keep wanting to go to say defend it's no longer defending that that square it's yep. no longer attacking i kept looking e4 before you e4. before you move the rook up i kept thinking wow it'd be nice if you could push here but you can't he's got too many on it on it yep and then what was funny was that this made it so that now it is available yeah which on the follow-up which my thought was when he came to E was that you're just trading off and getting us and trying to stabilize this the center and, and a structure that you're like hey look you're gonna have to trade something off potentially to get even on material to get through yep but that's too passive because the aggressive way if you thought of attacking all over the place is that this is no longer attacking then you see that yep hey guys no uh busy uh you guys aren't counting exactly right this this would have been this would have been a rook and a queen versus two rooks and a knight. So if you take the rook versus the queens, then you have a rook versus a knight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a rook plus queen plus two rooks and the knight. But yeah, I agree. And and black has more pawns. Pawns, yeah. I mean, really, your advantage now. I don't even think there's a black but is... I still prefer. I think it's a clear black is winning. Yeah, and I mean, you can you could... can always a, a pressure a lot with these pawns about promoting them. And just so you know, guys, the computer agrees at a minus five point five for five point seven. It can't decide, but black is winning by five points at this point. Yep. What was it an actual game when we got back? If we would have played a. Uh... Well, I'm just curious here when you're down the material, but you have the two center pawns. White is up seven points at this point. White is up roughly seven. He's destroying. And with this move, he drops to 5.3. And this is where the computer confuses me. But here's the best move for black. And then, oh, look at that best move. Ah, interesting. He just says, you just come in and attack the queen. Hit the queen. Yeah, because if you, I don't know. Let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm okay, you take. And it says that white is still winning by a good portion. Weird. Yeah, this is where the computer just starts getting getting me a headache. I'm like, <laughs> really? This should you get all that for the queen? Why do you get so much? You know. But yeah, that's that's where I stop. My head hurts. I've, I've, I've tried to learn to stop looking at engines and go back through games and say, okay, like I'll see the graph at least on the bottom yeah. and say, okay, on this move. 
somebody made a mistake. What was the better moves? What were the better candidate moves at that point? Yeah, why Write did it out. swing at that point? What was the major swing? Yeah. And I, and I Write them out and then go back and check with an engine. That's another good saying, P-Flight. That's a great saying. Stockfish is fishy. Um, I, I would <laughs> I would definitely um, look at, your, at when the computer says it's a blunder. Uh, inaccuracies I almost ignore. Uh, mistakes sometimes are uh, valid, but yeah, it's hard. I, I don't I don't like uh, bizfish. Uh, you like bizfish better, busy? Uh, bizfish, huh? So you installed it, but does that work in Leeches as you're doing it, or because it has stockfish? So can you change it from stockfish to bizfish, or is bizfish busy's version just using your own brain? I would like it if that's what bizfish is. That's it's a funny. good joke then. Yes, I like the joke. <laughs> yes, that's, that's funny. I'll take the joke. That's a good joke then, Busy. I like it. All right. This, this is an interesting game to analyze for myself just because I've, I don't play this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was. I don't play this Bishop, this Bishop E6 line. So we were setting this up, but what was interesting um, here, you went with the knight move, but you're happy to trade the bishop, right? Because then you actually had, like you said, you were saying you had. I, am, I didn't. I didn't want to allow him to bring his knight forward with tempo. Right. So you were talking about this. Yeah. Which yeah, this does the same thing. If he goes back here, you could still trade it, and if he doesn't, right? I mean, if he takes you, now the knight can't even get to that square. Yeah, it was just you missed the fact that you had a fork afterwards. Yeah, and I thought about I will in my original. My thought process too is if you can do it with a piece, move a piece and not a pawn, mm -hmm. and then missing the forks, what was was the killer part? Yep, yep. Knights so, on the rim. That was my rim. argument for not using the pawn. Knights on the rim are mighty grim, even in this situation. They are. Yeah, B five, B five is the best. Yeah, I thought you had that. also talked about that. You know that you were doing it so that you can kick the knight. And kick the knight around. So again, you know, if you had to trade it first, kick the knight, the knight would have to move. It's not going there because you could double up the pawns. So chances are it's going here or here. And here would be nice because then it could try to get back here to, again, double up on Unite. But now you can now you can talk about pushing the bishop. Things are simplified. If the bishop goes back here, you could double up his center pawns instead of your center pawns being doubled. It just would have been an interesting game. Yeah. Yeah. And you, can, you always got this. I know in these structures for black, you have this knight. You have these two knight maneuvers you can do too which are bringing this knight to here mm -hmm. in order to play g5. And then it protects it from this knight, right? If that makes yep. sense. If he goes here, you can play here and then play g5. And it also opens up the C break if you want to do that. Instead, well, not right here. Yeah, I guess you got to play g5 first, right? Is that it? Yeah, that's the here. thing. You have to here. play g5 or d5 so that you could get your queen here to protect. Queen out. Yeah, standard way is for the queen to come here to protect the knight at the same time. Okay. Yeah, but here, you know, th this sacrifice is probably dubious. You should be able to survive. But that's that's the yeah, question, right? you got to be able to survive that. Survive. There's, there's some other lines, too, that are, like, if you don't, if you still have this bishop here that make this a little harder for white to get away with. Yep. And that kind of thing, and I don't mind that light squared bishop. And this would be the kind of thing right here where you might use the computer and say, okay, if I do this, you know, what would the computer do? And just play it out and see if you, how you would survive so you know how to defend. Uh, but guys, I totally agree with you. Um, you know I agree with you. You get a lot more out of your analysis by doing it yourself and only use the computer for specific things and maybe double checking certain things but yeah, if you're using the computer primarily, every every time you play a game, you look at the computer, you're getting lazy, and you're getting a very skewed view of moves that you should make because you're looking at computer-based moves which are have a different algorithm than you have in your head. Yes, totally agree. P flight, we're all on the same page. Man, we're like we should start a choir. We're all singing together. I guess they're funny. All right. Well, I appreciate it. So thinking move order two. Somebody once told me with engines too, if you uh, if you use engines that plus or minus three on an engine is is even in human terms. Okay. Well, I know point five. Anything less than one, it's definitely you might as well just say yeah. you're even. 
Um, well, like below master level or two thousand, probably like plus or minus three is typically even as long as materials roughly even. All right. So the major thing I'm working with you today, which is not an easy thing. I don't know if I started you off on something too hard. I'm hoping not. I think I I think from the way you talk and the way that um you were able to explain yourself, I think you are okay. I think you can handle this by by far. And it's just thinking about spaces instead of pieces on the spaces and making sure you think about how positions change. So, and for me, the, the key is the one busy found. I wasn't even, I didn't find it, right? It doesn't matter. The point is, how did the position change here? And then how does the position change when that happens, right? So this is a mistake by White, in my opinion, because he gives up this square. Now, I thought at first, hey, that's really good for white because now you can't take because you did this. I thought you shouldn't have done this because then he couldn't have pushed, right? If you kept your rooks connected, you could have taken with tempo on the queen. Um, so I thought, ah, oh, he can't do that, um, but now he can. So I thought this was bad for black. And I thought here, this was bad for black because he's going to, you know, now the pawn isn't um, as dynamic. It's not causing tension, but I just missed the fact that this pawn is going to be hanging too, right? Because now you chase the knight. And as you saw, I think uh, the computer says even do something like that. So, yeah, so we're not computers. So we do human moves either here or here. And this pawn is hanging either way. And it's just interesting. So this one was actually a bad move because of this. And, and again, you can look at the computer just to see if it is a good. Yeah, you're winning by a lot now. It swung it totally to the other way. And you could have found it based on the fact that this was no longer protecting that. And you go, whoa, it's no longer hitting that square. I still am hitting that square. That's a and great square. It, match, it Give matches me that up square. with captures. Yeah. Give me that. That's and the other big thing, too. It's no longer attacking and it's matching up with a potential capture that you might dismiss because you're just like, well, this, you know, this isn't a human move I'm seeing necessarily right away. Busy right. solid, but yeah, a weaker was... player's not seen or they're, they're just not thinking that, hey. I have this attack right here. Yep, and I think that's a human knight. move. I think this knight taking is definitely a human move. Um, it's just, it's having the patience to say, okay, the knight's attacking me, but what changed first? I know the knight's attacking. Let me see what changed first. That's free. Okay, now let me do, now that I did that, uh, I'm still looking and saying, okay, he's attacking my rook, he's attacking my knight. That's part of the, how did the board change, right? Okay, I got yep. that. Now, if I even, even if I don't see it right away, if I say, okay, what are my checks? I don't have any. What are my captures? Yes. If you just looked at your captures, and th this won't be a threat, but yeah, uh, or attack. Right, yeah. But if you looked at your captures, like you said, if you looked at those three guys, if you looked at those three guys and you said, these are my captures that I have right now, only one of those things is enough not like the others that would make you do it. And so yeah, yeah. It almost it jumps out right away almost like well I'm not going to give up the rook I'm not going to give up the queen right so if you look at oh, all the, the knight, possible the captures with tempo. definitely and this one would be a candidate and you'd have to look at it and say does it work and you'd spend the amount of time you'd need to see if it worked and you would have decided it works and you would have made the move yeah. but you have to check for checks captures and attacks and I think obviously at this point you did not check all your captures. Right, you just said I can't give up the rook. I'm going to take and win a pawn. You do win the pawn, but you could have won yep. more. Well, my, orig my original thought was when the you win the pawn, you neutralize a piece on your side, and you can play this C3 move and kind of stabilize your center. Right. So again, so you, you're the only one with the center. But so you defensive, had a plan. That's all very defensive and not attacking. Yes, you came up with a plan before you checked for all the captures. And your plan seemed vi um, viable and worthwhile, so you went with the plan. But if yeah. instead you make sure that you do the checks, captures, and attacks before right. you come up with your plan, and then use that data for your plan. So use the data of how did the position change? Well, he was attacking here, 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 here. And now that he's moved, he's attacking here, here. I'm sorry, not there. Here, 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 right? Okay, that's how that squares. changed. But that this one is no longer under attack. That this one was, but it's no longer. These are the ones that are no longer under attack. Okay, so you say, oh, okay, oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay, now let me check for checks. Now let me check for captures. 
right? We did those. Let me check for attacks. Okay, um, this is also an attack. Not only a capture, but it attacks. So you would have seen it because it does two things. Yep. And then hopefully you would have said, okay, now what's my plan based on how the position changed, the checks, captures, and attacks I have? And if you, if you make your decision based on all that, you probably would have found it. Sound Interesting. good? Yep, absolutely. Got all work right. to do. All right. All right, guys. Um, I got to go because, you know, back to work. Let's see. Who are we going to raid? Who's on the team out there? Who is on the team out there? Oh, Nobler won. Nobler won. Oh, Wade in games. I've never raided Wade in games or Surya Chess. Wow. Fridays at 11 o'clock, there's a lot of streamer teamers out there. Team stream. Stream team. Team stream. Team stream. I like that better. I think team stream sounds cool. So let's see if Wade in Chess has a disclaimer about being an uh, adult. Because, you know, I don't do the adult. Oh, and I promised you guys, uh, I, I will take two seconds. Because I did promise you guys I would show you the uh, images I was, I, was, I was working on for those other for the other um, we get we get now um, Pat we get these you can have up to five emotes for followers just for followers just for being a follower you can get a special emote and so I um, I was trying to make some good emotes for followers and I wanted to see what you guys thought uh, where is am I, I'm not oh, I'm not in the right place yet would you have to make the emotes then um, so I made them, I just took my own pictures. I have, to, I have to still size them right, but I will show you guys what I came up with for my emotes. So there's one. Oops. Do you see it? You guys should see it, right? There's one. So that's a blue lantern like the shirt I'm wearing. Kind of a surprise, surprise face. We have uh, Spidey. Captain America, laughing face. Don't know which ones I'm going to use, but these are the ones I, I came up with. Superman, because you guys said, yeah, do shirts. Now, that's all my shirt ones, I think. No, I have one more. Uh, yep, I have Batman also. All right. And then I have two of my cat. Now, this one, unfortunately, has a little bit of my hand in the picture. But it's like she's like, who, me? Hands up, right? I don't um, manos arribas, manos arribas, and then I have this one. So now I have to choose five because I can only have five, and I have one, two, three, four, five. If I do shirts, if I do shirts, I've got all five, and I am I am still looking for tier three for um, tier three support. So I might just use one of the cats for the tier three, and I think I'll use the shirts for the followers, and we'll see what it does. There you go. You guys have gotten the preview on the shirts. Okay, I had to do that. I had, I had to share that. All right. All right, guys, back to... Uh, so Wade is uh, uh, streaming. He's doing something here. I don't know, free loop. But he is doing chess. I like it any time I can raid somebody doing chess. I've never raided him. We'll raid him. Say hi. My first time raiding a team stream of Wade. Wade in games. Okay. And if you want to stay on two seconds, Pat, um, I'll say Absolutely. goodbye to you after this. And um, yeah, it's for followers, Biz. You're fo everybody's a follower. Yeah, it should be easy. Everybody's a follower. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually you have to get emotes by being a sub. This is an emote just for being a follower. All right, see you guys later.